Hello, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening. Good to have you here, Paul Tranny, with the one and only James Sue. The only one that matters, the only one I know. Do you know any others? <laughs> it's the only one that matters right here. That's right. For day two. That's right. Did you have a good time yesterday? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's good. Good, good. <laughs> there we go, there's that smile. He has the best laugh too, by the way. Uh, so, good having you back, man, again. This is gonna be sweet. Day two, welcome Michael and Beth and Oliver and Colby, good to see some f familiar names and uh, as well as uh, little avatar icons as well. <laughs> so we do have a, a contest or a challenge. Day two, you can always kind of check that out as part of that fancy little challenge tab you can see right here. So again, this is day two, we get a little bit more advanced, it's actually three plus screens on making an experience for a smartwatch time travel app. And it has to actually work. That's the key thing. Hmm. Uh, but no, just prototype one. And you have this fancy alumni icon set. So check that out, feel free. And uh, we'll take a look at those after a while. But super cool stuff. There's plenty of uh, various UI kits as well that hopefully you're aware of right under Get UI Kits. But anyways. Enough about that. Just want to give everybody a warm welcome. Sweet. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, you ready to get this party started? Oh, am I supposed to work? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, let's kind of dive into this because again, we're gonna we're gonna review your schedule, my friend. All right. So all right. let's take a look at our your job today. From nine to eleven, we have you, buddy. We have the door locked, and we're going to continue an app that we're working on that started yesterday. Alex Benega, as well as Sarah, Kevin Lee, with Jessica Moon, who's an awesome person and designer in her own right. So mm -hmm. it's cool to have, you know, just such awesome talent in the building today, all day, from 9 a.m. starting now to 3 p.m. Pacific time. Super cool. And let's not forget, by the way, today is kind of the last day for uh, challenges. So we have a challenge today. Tomorrow, we're gonna do uh, portfolio reviews. But again, we have daily submissions. Gets a little bit more advanced, like I mentioned, as part of uh, day two, as we take a look at that. The design and prototype, a time travel app, smartwatch, and then portfolio reviews. So get those ready if you can. Uh, Cindy and Melanie and Ryan and Colby and everybody, submit your portfolios. Really, we'll dive into that tomorrow, but actually prep them today uh, and have a chance to win Creative Cloud. Pretty sweet gig, huh? Like, yeah. do, do some work, potentially win Creative Cloud, a year of Creative Cloud. That's kind of a cool deal. Totally. Yeah. Not to mention, by the way, do you know, like, Adobe XD has a starter a starter plan. It's a starter version. Huh. It's the full version. It's not like we watermark or do anything like that. It's the full version. You just publish out one prototype at a time. Oh. But that's kind of sweet. That's awesome. So anyways, enough enough of me doing this. <laughs> Let's dive into this, man. How you feeling today? So far, so good. Just feeling good? Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> Should we get started? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, so just to do a quick recap for those who weren't with us yesterday, what we're building here is a succulent discovery app. Um, We've uh, kindly titled it What the Suck, and it is a beginner's guide to succulent discovery. So we've, uh, yesterday we had the opportunity to build out the splash screen, um, kind of the different discover screens as well, and populate them. From, we went from wireframing to actual high fidelity design. Um, so we populated them with uh, high res assets that we were able to download from Adobe Stock. It's looking great, man. Oh, I mean, you, yeah, man. I mean, let, let me know what you think, Rasim and everyone, oh, tell Alistair. Me, tell me more. Oh, they're keeping us in check, too. Nicholas is like, hey, you know what? Did you, you got a, a XD updated? I'm glad you mentioned that, actually, because, again, just you might have to restart or at least restart Creative Cloud. Calling me out. No, it's really good, though, because you like, if people don't aren't going to know. Uh, if you go to the Creative Cloud desktop app right up there, boop, and then apps. And that's where you the magic happens. Oh, I, just, I thought I just updated this morning. Wait, there's another update out. Oh, we got it. We have another one. We could always we could always do that in a second. The nice thing about XD is that it's, it's pretty lightweight, so mm -hmm. it doesn't doesn't take long at all. I'd say the big thing, and I can always post a link to the new features, but like having dashed dotted lines, that's kind of a big deal right. uh, from a designer standpoint. Right. And then we could also highlight features even from last month, talking about like overlays, like pins. 
maybe pinned content, mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, I and I. Know what that means. Oh, geez, sorry. <laughs> never. Sorry, <laughs> I've never had that happen before. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I leaned on my phone. Oh, um, happens. But uh, and not to interrupt, but we're kind of as we get into the details screen, like the next level, mm -hmm. like some of this content might scroll basically. Yep. So that's what might be a candidate for like, uh, you know, fixed position items. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So what do you think of should, should I update now? Uh, you don't have to. I wouldn't honestly let it stop you. Okay. I say we'll just like work for a little bit and okay. <laughs> if we get a break, honestly, like maybe when we, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll work it out. Sounds good. Oh, uh, Alistair, thank you so much. Great job, guys, with the new update. I'm, we're going to go ahead and take credit for it. <laughs> you're welcome. Like, if you like, you're welcome. Yeah, we worked really hard on it. Don't worry, no. It right. wasn't the huge team behind us behind on the other side of this wall, actually. No extra charge. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, get, we got you covered. You're welcome. Now, go go, go and pay it forward. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is building out the SDP, also known as the succulent uh, detail page. Um, well, actually, this... Excuse me, uh, my correction, this is the GDP, the genus detail page. Genus detail page. <clears throat> and so we're going to be diving into one specific genus of succulents, which is the Echeveria, one of my favorite. Um, so what we've gone ahead and started doing is uh, we've started wireframing everything out. Um, and the idea is that we kind of want to build this to be able to um, populate it with high res photos and uh, basically polish the design so we can uh, connect our discover pages into our GDP pages. GDP, genus, detail page. I like it, man, you've already had some nice work here. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if everybody knows, I can easily see like uh, the repeat grid right down there. Oh, that's right. Do you mind just kind of like doing that real fast? Sure. Just like from, yeah. not totally from scratch, but you should be able to break, maybe just take pieces of that and. Sure. So hopefully everybody knows, Valter, you probably know what's up. Uh, Drew Claus as well. I don't know if you're aware of uh, Repeat Grid, but I want this in actually every app that I work in. It's a really great feature. It's one of my favorite. Um, and so the idea is that you kind of create the elements that you are going to be repeating. Um, so in this case, it's this list item here for a uh, specific variety of Echeveria. And what I go ahead and do is up here in Repeat Grid, I turn this, I toggle this on, and you'll get these kind of handles on the side. So I can actually repeat it both ways if I wanted to, but you know we're not going to do that way because we don't need that. Yeah. So we have something like how many? We've got seven here. So we're just going to go ahead and drag it out till we get seven. Oh, how many is that? There it is. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite features where you can actually um, tweak the gutters in between each list item and it will adjust them for every list item. Nice. And then what if you like move around some of that content in one of them? So the cool thing about this is you can actually, um, each one of these is its own unique element. So if I had black prints and then I had another one, like uh, like Lola, I can just jump straight into it and, and kind of rename change. that. Change. Yep. Yeah, like change the data. Is the design still like tied together? What if you decided to center that text instead of having it left justified? So what if you moved it over? So if I did decide to center it, everything would propagate yeah. across all of those list items. So it's a really cool item to be able to um, create these type of elements really quickly. And uh, you guys already saw it was like maybe one minute at, at most. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. And even if you, so we're, we're, it's, so the, is it, it's kind of like there's a, the style is tied together, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. the design, and then the data is obvious, like separate. Exactly. It's almost like CSS and then HTML. A little bit. That's kind of like I'm trying to yeah. do some analogies. Yeah. And then the cool thing is, is like you run into any issue, like you could always ungroup grid. Exactly. And, and you're back to, yeah. Exactly. Like let's and, say. And I would say even coming from Illustrator, if you're doing Command D all the time, think mm. about okay, I should probably make this repeat grid. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, totally. Command D. Nigeria in the house. Daniel, good to have you, my friend. Can this be tied? Drew Claus is asking if it could be tied to an online database. Huh. So not right now, um, and there was an earlier question from Orion. So yes, you do have to hand this off to someone to to do the coding, essentially. Right. So if you want to populate with a different data set, um, it's very manual. Like, uh, and that's because this is a, it's an interface designer, and mm -hmm. it's a pro, you know it's for prototyping and designing interfaces. Um, so 
I don't think you'll be able to have any type of integrations like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although I will say that two years ago at Adobe Max, we showed a sneak of bringing in like almost like dummy. We actually did show a demo where you can drop in. Because what do you end up doing if you're doing a bunch of people's profiles? You're making up a bunch of names. Right. But basically, the demo was grabbing anything in a div on a page. Mm -hmm. If you go to Facebook, you grab some person's name, you know, that div, you drag it in, and it'd populate all of them. Mm. It was impressive. <laughs> so all, needless to say, I'm just saying we, we are exploring anything that you have to do multiple times. We're exploring shortcuts and easier ways to do things. Sure. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and keep continuing to work. Um, and... I'm just going to go ahead and tighten everything up just um, based on that same type of thinking yesterday that we had. It's like once we have it all, all the content kind of laid out on the screen, what, what type of um, things we want to live where, uh, it's kind of time to start polishing everything up, right? Yeah, man. So on this genus details page, I'll just walk you guys through it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> we've got our kind of standard header, back arrow that's going to take us back to our, those discover pages. Um, a little bit of content that I've put together here that I've pulled up, um, off the internet. Uh, just kind of like description and overview about you know what this genus is all about <clears throat> and then a couple of varieties that uh, you know you might come across um, as you are beginning your journey into succulent discovery so the way that I like to approach these things is I typically just go from the, the top down and I kind of refine things as I need to so we're just gonna start with this top section here and kind of reference anything that we have um, that we have on kind of our initial design. So we're going to be using our um, existing character styles here, so that we don't have to like reuse anything. So I've already set this one to Proxima Nova, set over set to twenty four over thirty. And actually, we might not even need this section because what I think would be really cool is if we just extended that. Yeah. Do you and then. then yeah. And, and then populated this. So <clears throat> I've gone ahead and grabbed a bunch of photos from Adobe Stock. And what we're going to do now is look for a Echeveria photo. You're, you're on your own there, buddy. <laughs> I have no idea what. <laughs> so here's the photo that I want that I've already kind of picked out for us. So what I'm just going to do is... Um, just drag it in here. Boom. Check that out. It just like masks it for me automatically. Yeah, it masks it. So you could always like, you, if you double click, you can kind of move that around, which that actually is a new feature. Oh, I love that. It used to just center fill, and now it's actually a mask. That's so awesome. that's cool. So you can already see we're starting to have to make some updates because uh, because we have that image background now. Um, <clears throat> you know, we want to maintain that we have contrast. So let's go ahead and um, look up one of our other UI kits that we had access to yesterday. Oh yeah. And what we're gonna do is just replace out that status bar. Because we want to use the light version. Okay. But, nice. Oh, I wanna grab the whole thing. <laughs> Hello Eileen, good to good to see you. Arthur uh, went back into his uh, recent design and and reduced all of his drop shadows based on our session yesterday. <laughs> like, serious. So we're just, like, ins inspiring you know, them. Overhaul of drop shadows. We were we were drop shadow shaming people. Uh, Is that a thing? Not uh, really, <laughs> but we were... <laughs> including myself. I was drop shadow shaming myself. You did a great job. But, again, it's, like, one of those little things that... Yeah. So kind of know this. So here's something that I really like to do, which is... Um, <clears throat> When you have white text on an image, it's kind of, it kind of loses like all of its contrast. Mm -hmm. So this is a technique that I like to practice, where I actually put this underlying gradient, and we'll just kind of move it. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of this is to make sure that you still retain that contrast. And another way you could do this is if you wanted to, um, <clears throat> if you wanted to add like drop shadows. <laughs> oh my god! It all, yeah, it's no, always going no, back but seriously, shadows. like, and again, it's I, I, honestly, it's like how to use some of the most basic features, like. You know, it's in there for a reason. Yeah. So I'm just An yeah, another another like just random idea. Since you have that selected, sure. go ahead and have it so like select it. Yeah. And then just turn on background blur. Ooh. And that'll blur it out. But the really cool thing about this is to take that whole top bar 
and make it a fixed element. And then as you scroll, it blurs out everything behind it. It just looks really cool. Just check that. Yeah, and just check it. And then uh, now you will have to check all those elements. So you typically want to like, I'd probably group them. Okay. And then hit fixed position. Okay, let's try that. And then just hit, uh, hit preview. And then scroll. Oh my God. What? Look what at the that. what? That is so dope. Ah. <sighs> Wow, it's yeah, really, it's really Carolyn. starting to come together. Look at this. Yeah, man. <clears throat> so it's getting tough to read though when you come down here because it's going yeah. to run on Oh, by the way, so go uh, select it again, that uh, box. Okay. And double click inside because it looks like they might be grouped. Just Okay, so now look at background blur underneath it. You can adjust the brightness and contrast. Oh my God, seriously? Yeah. Oh my God. This is so dope. So. Oh, hold on, that's too much. All right, let's try that again. Uh, so, Carolyn, did you catch that? So, basically, any element, you select it, even if it's actually text, by the way. Um, select background blur. It works even, honestly, better than even Photoshop, because Photoshop blurs the actual element, and in this case, you're blurring everything behind it. Mm -hmm. So, it just seems, like, more flexible. This is nice. And, Alistair, by the way, like, fixed elements, that's, like, brand new. That's, like, a month old, pr less than a month old. That's really nice. So. Okay, so we'll keep that there for now. See how we like it. <clears throat> Let me just go ahead and keep uh, tweaking these things. So we're gonna uncheck that border and <clears throat> so in here we've already got a bunch of good things working for us. So now all we're gonna do is like clean up the grid stuff. Yeah, kind of. So just get that aligned. It. Yeah, exactly. Just get it aligned back on the baseline, and you see everything's like kind of. Uh, lining up nicely, and that, mm -hmm. my friend, is no accident. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> no, actually, that's a good question. I know it's a it's a six point grid, right? Yep. And then, what is your font sizes? Did you already you have that like? Yeah, so I've pre tell me I've pre populated them. Um, so check this out. So this one is twelve over eighteen. And just to recap over yes, uh, of, of what we went over yesterday, the rule of thumb that I like to adhere to, and this is kind of where um, how I was trained is uh, you want to do 120% of what your, um, uh, for letting of what your point size is, or what your font size is. So if we do 12 times 1.2, we get 14. I like to go a little airier, so if I really wanted to adhere to that rule of thumb, um, you know, I would actually do it 15, but uh, you know, it's good to know yeah. the rules so that you can know when to break them. Yeah, exactly, and not only that, I noticed you just opened up a Spotlight to do that, yep. but in that uh, uh, field, any um, number field that you have off to the side, if you're talking the line height, do that same calculation. And all calculations basically are in Look at that. there as there, well. There it is. And again, brand new. That was like less than a month old. That's awesome. So, so helpful. Is there a snap feature? Uh, yeah. There might be. Um, I mean, there's already like smart, smart guides. <laughs> Let's see. So things naturally will snap by default. I wonder if this will work. So there's a, there's a feature for a line to pixel grid. Uh, I don't know that that did anything. Huh. All right. Well, we're just gonna move on. And this is really smart. I love, I mean, you can definitely tell that obviously you're a talented designer, really well-trained designer. It's like, <laughs> no, seriously, like, this is exactly what I do. If it's smaller text, I make it bolder. Uh -huh. But if it's larger, and there's different ways to do things, but it just looks so much more elegant using that nice, thin, thin font. <clears throat> totally. Um, and that's kind of the rule of thumb that I like to adhere to, which is uh, when you do get larger, you know, like Paul was saying, um, I like to go softer and more delicate rather than bold because yeah. it, it becomes kind of too in your face. So it was yeah, like, exactly. And you got to think about just like how in the in your face do you want it? Like, and, right. and it might be if it is larger and bold, do you make it like sort of a medium gray if right. it's going to be on white? Exactly. You know, but at the same time, I've seen really bold text work really well in designs. Right. So, but this is totally like. So it is a matter of like style. I dig trial. Yeah, I see it's all tied together. Oh, and by the way, have you? And then if you're using obviously your character styles. Oh yeah, exactly. So you want to reuse this. So um, you're kind of building this like library, so you don't have to constantly like think about oh how how did I set those headers? How did I set that body copy? 
um, and you're kind of like staying true to yourself as you're moving along here. Yeah, and you know, at least for me, I I, I start out with the best intentions (laughs) and it gets a little messy after a while and Mm -hmm. you kind of do have to clean it up. Like it's like any layers panel. Mm -hmm. Like I would like to say in a perfect world, everything's gonna be perfect in your assets panel. Yep. Is that safe to say? Just to be, Yeah. at least, I don't know, lazy. It's one of those things where like your document is always gonna be living and breathing. And so um, as you start to build more and more out of it, like you're gonna be able to have the different pieces. So like, you know, imagine you're like painting a giant picture and you're like putting all the puzzle pieces together. Um, The more you keep working on it, the more pieces you're gonna be creating and adding to your like toolkit. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, sorry to be distracted. Somebody's at, Ahmed's talking about that. He wants to know how you actually turned on that grid, too. Oh, okay, yeah. So this is a feature that we went over on day one. Um, so the idea is that you want to set this baseline grid up so that you have kind of like a vertical rhythm for everything to kind of adhere to. So the way that you get um, access to it is you actually have to click on your artboard. So in this case, I'm clicking on the GDP. And then in here, you'll get this grid module. So in here, you can choose between layout and square. And the difference is you'll get... Um, you know, your traditional column layout, which you can uh, use for your horizontal <coughs> alignment needs. And then if you want to add one more layer, you just go to square and you kind of define it here. And so, um, you know, a little bit about like what I was talking about yesterday, I was I was trained with a 12 pixel grid, but um, in this case, we're using six because I just want to go more granular. And if you really, you know, hated yourself and wanted to go crazy, you could go three. <laughs> but like, we're not gonna go, <laughs> we're not gonna go that hard today. I don't know if the, and then you can turn that on and off. I wonder if it's the, I think it's the same shortcut. Yeah, uh, so, command apostrophe. We'll turn, we'll toggle it on and off. Command apostrophe. And I'm, I'm almost, I'll double check, but I'm 90% sure that's the same in Illustrator. Oh, that's lovely. Check yeah. that out. That is perfect. Do I need to be on the artboard though? Uh, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Nice mouse looking at those photos. And we're learning about succulents <laughs> and plants. Are we learning about succulents or plants? Or are we learning about Harry Potter and the Black Prince? You know, it could be little, I don't know. A little from column A, a little from column B. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> so I'm just gonna create a horizontal rule here. Um, and this is kind of like a trick that I like to do, which is under the fill. We'll go this is one of my um, go to's for creating a uh, horizontal rule. So we might, have to tw- we might have to tweak this real quick so we can actually get a handle on it. <clears throat> so I'll just go ahead and do it first and then I'll explain what I've been doing. So I'm setting up a gradient for this horizontal rule and it's got three, um, three points. So on one side, on both sides actually, I'm gonna set it to white. Well actually we should use the same color. So let's use a really light gray that we've already defined. <clears throat> oh, it doesn't work that way. All right, so we'll use this gray here. And we'll use it for all three points. Oh, I know. And then here, we'll actually, I said all three. <laughs> and so here we'll actually turn the um, opacity off for it on both sides. I'm going to keep the border on just so you can see it. And then we will place it where we want. And this is just an easy way to be able to get the full width without messing around with it too much. <clears throat> and now you can kind of see what we're, what we're going oh, yeah. for. Mm-hmm. We're, getting that, we're getting that horizontal rule so that we don't have to have these borders on anymore. Yeah. And we might even want to go more delicate than that, so we'll just do a one pixel rule. Arthur, did you just cast a spell on us? <laughs> Wingardium Succulosa. It's like a Harry Potter spell. Is that what you said? Which goes for make it better. <laughs> and that's what we're doing. It's, it's a, gonna be magical, because that's actually kind of like repeat grid is kind of magical. Oh, it's totally. And this, 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 that's why I'm putting it in here. So now I can turn off the border and <clears throat> adjust it. So check that out. Yeah. It's starting to come Hopefully, together. Yeah, and hopefully everybody can see that. I mean, it's obviously. I'm into it. I'm into it. <clears throat> so this is looking really good. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is put in the photos of the different varieties and start populating the different uh, names in here. 
And so before I do that, because I don't want to use the same photo for every single one, um, now is actually the time for me to go ahead and break apart my repeat grid. So one thing that I like to do because I get a little nervous when I do these things is I like to create a backup and I just keep it on my artboard side. Mm. That way if I ever need to like go back in yep. time, I can just keep it, reuse it. Um, and now I can just go ahead and, it's just ungroup grid, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yep, so, yep. Oh. You got it. Love seeing, Preston says, love seeing how you work, and welcome, Robert. If you are just joining us, we are with the one and only James Sue. You can check out his uh, little info, there's info tab. We have a challenge going on, which is the next tab over as well. Feel free to check that out. We'll review those in about, uh, yeah, about uh, an, an hour. But not only that, we just have a random chat and win uh, going on, we're just give away uh, a special little something something for you in about four minutes. So thanks for hanging out. And this is our succulent app, which is just it does not looking. suck. It does not suck. <laughs> Let's say. So I've already gone ahead and uh, just put together a bunch of names and, and uh, photos for us that we've already co collected. Are those real names? These are real names. This is this is the best thing ever. I just love like topsy turvy. That's a real one. <laughs> and Pearl von Nuremberg. That's a real one, dude. It's like so common. <laughs> uh, so check this out. Adobe Racadabra or Ad Adobe Cadabra. That's a people were mentioning that yesterday, Alistair. That comes from Rufus Deutschler. I would like to say Rufus coined that phrase. That's like. Old school Rufus, in case you were wondering. <laughs> That's what he would say before like showing off like an awesome feature. What would he say? He would do, he would do, he would select that element and then uh, say Adobe Kadabra and hit repeat grid. <laughs> it's like boom, that's amazing. How did you do that Rufus? You're amazing. It's like, I can't tell you, I'm keeping my edge. No, I'm just joking. Hold on, my wife's telling me something. <laughs> I, I use the word dumb. She's like, hey, can you like pick up milk on the way home? What is this? <laughs> Yeah, so um, what my wife is asking me is, uh, do I have words, keywords that I like to keep in mind um, to describe the look before I start working? And the answer is yes. So um, this is kind of like what I like to talk about, the difference between like product and visual design. So product uh, design or you know, UI, UX design is, is really all about the functionality. And then visual design is all about how things look. So it's about kind of evoking a personal uh, emotion and that kind of emotional takeaway is what is going to be the most long-lasting thing so <clears throat> you know five ten twenty years from now you may not remember what the suck as an app but you remember that it looked kind of hipster mm -hmm. kind of cool it made you feel cool about discovering succulents yeah and then when you go and see that like type of aesthetic again you're like oh I really resonate with that and I want that mm -hmm. yeah that's good. I like I like that you're using those those word like those descriptive words essentially. Like we get it. Delicate, you know, how else would you put some of this so it's Exactly. You'd be good sommelier. <laughs> Was it? Right. I'm I'm uh getting hints of lindenberry in here. <laughs> like it's like oaky what, what oak? I haven't drank a glass of oak. What is that like? <laughs> but it helps describe it. It's the same thing you're doing here. Totally. So I'm just going ahead. I'm separating the content a little bit, just because I don't. I want this module to be uh, to look visually different than this module. And I've just gone ahead and reused our our HR there. <clears throat> All right. So this is looking pretty good. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. Boom, we got our anchor grade. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, look at how dope that looks. Oh, look at it's that. like it? Oh, you know what? I gotta put that underneath. You see that? Oh, I see, yeah, that line. But wow, look at this. It's looking good. All right. So yeah, like Adobe Live says, log in, get ready. We'll do a, a giveaway in a second. It's looking really sharp. And we also get into prototyping. Again, we started with the sketches yesterday. Today's, we're getting more into the details of designing and uh, probably dive even more into prototyping, like maybe later today uh, today and tomorrow for sure. Mm -hmm. Some prototyping. There's like new features there as well, but we 
You'll have to <laughs> wait. <laughs> All right. So, so you can uh, just answer Daryl's question. Um, you can't link a text document to, say, uh, a text field in here. You can take a TXT and drag and drop it, if that helps. But uh, don't think of it as link. But let's dive into, shall we? Sure. Chat and win. Let's do it. Welcome back, everybody. That fancy video by Oddfellows means just go ahead and enter something into chat. Be like, hey, what's up? Hey, James, your hair is looking, you're on point today. That's right. And that's how you have the opportunity of winning. We just need to make sure something's at the other end of your keyboard in case we call your name for our giveaway. And our giveaway today happens to be this very exclusive uh, Adobe XD notebook, just like what James carry, what you carry around. Exactly. It's kind of like this sort of thing, and it actually has all of his secrets in it. Secrets to success populated by James. Million dollar He'll secrets. Right here. I don't even know, like, it's like a sealed, I can't even take a peek. It's either that or or maybe it's just blank. So the cool thing about this is, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's actually embossed here with the XD logo on the side, so. And let's, you can, we can go ahead and like, kind of open it up, then, shall on. we? Uh, I'm gonna double check to see. Sometimes they're lined, they have a grid, uh -huh. sometimes. Oh yeah, I'm very particular about the grid. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, this is nice. Oh, look at that. All life secrets right in here. Life secrets. And it is un unruled or unlined. Yep. It's unruly in here. <laughs> and the secret to all of life's, uh, you know, the answer to all of life's questions. <laughs> Gridtastic. I love that. I like Daryl, awesome. So yes. Got that for you. We'll pick a random name, or maybe not so random, whoever sent Gus Mundy. Just kidding. <laughs> the system isn't good. I don't know how it works. Behind the scenes, I hear there's a big machine and there's like lots of background checking, or I have no idea. But he's gonna do his magic, the whole Adobe Live team. And they'll draw a winner who is right above us. Boop. Melanie Mitchell, congratulations. Our random winner is Melanie Mitchell. We'll get this a notebook right Woo. out to you. And you are the proud owner of it. And yeah, we'll have Gus drop it off uh, himself. Personally. In person, yeah. yes. That's He's right cool. outside your door right now. That's and not... you're gonna hear the doorbell in three, two, one. That's not weird, right? What if it did ring? <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> well, that'd be like, freak me out. <laughs> but we always have giveaways. This is the giveaway today. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, we do know that we do these random giveaways for each session. So if you didn't win now, uh, you actually have to be, or you have an opportunity to be more deliberate with winning by uh, diving into the challenge. Mm -hmm. So congratulations, Melanie. Hopefully we saw your name and you responded in chat. But we will contact you through Behance and there's still the challenge going on now. That's the next countdown clock you'll see in a little bit. Um, and we'll review those live, so. Sweet. All right, should we get back to it? Yeah, let's, let's, like, let's like dive in. Let's. All right. So the funny thing is on Adobe Stock, they don't get as granular as I do here, so you, know, you get that little added perk, no charge. Oh yeah? And so you just gonna have to trust me that I know these genuses. So this is the Black Prince right here. And we, we, we already talked about murdered out succulents. Oh, love it. And so we're just gonna go ahead and plug that in. So I want this aesthetic where, um, <clears throat> I don't know that I drew it, no I didn't. So I want it where it kind of like looks like it's bleeding into this edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that. Well, this is huge. <laughs> uh, I, you know, that happens all, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. So we'll just get it to something more manageable. And this is the thing that I like to do, which is when I do that, when I resize elements, uh, they'll get really small. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll also shift click the element that I need it to be in or you know near it. And then I'll actually use these alignment tools here while, where this one I'll tell it to go straight to the right. And you can see that it's gone there. And you can go straight down. And here we've got it manageable and usable. Uh, what are you going to do with the others? Uh, I'm going to populate them. 
So the thing that I want is where it is in there, but it is not. Did you, you broke it apart? I broke it apart. Okay. Uh, you know what else you could do? Tell me. Uh, so if you have a repeat grid and you have a shape, such as this circle, you have images on your desktop, take all those images, drag into one circle. Hold on, let me try that. Yeah, man. Are you serious? Yeah. Let's try it out. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm full of it. <laughs> we will find out in a second. You tell me. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro. Pedro, good to have you here. Let me know, uh, let us know if it's your first time joining us. Uh, maybe it's your first, maybe you were with us yesterday, but let us know if you're new, because uh, Pedro, I don't think we've met, and it's nice to meet you. Oh. So let us know if you're new, and maybe you're just a little shy. It's all good. My God. We're friendly here. Look, right? it did it. What? Just like you said. What? That is insane. So check this out. That's topsy-turvy right there. Topsy turvy. Like, this is this looks like topsy turvy. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so and yeah, you could do the same thing like I mentioned with a text file. You have a TXT file. Mm -hmm. If you have everything lined up, as in the all the names are in a text file just with hard returns. Oh. Da 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 da. Uh -huh. You would say Black Prince Lola. You know whatever. Oh my god. You could drag that into one text field. Brrr, propagate down. That is so good. Which is nice. It's nice for like any elements that you reuse. Like if you just need random usernames, you just have your random username txt file. You right. could drop it in. Your random user pictures, just drop Ooh. it in. It makes right, it right. super easy. That is so useful. Dara likes it. That's good to hear. Awesome. Ty says it's a game changer. We're going to go ahead and quote you. We're going to put that on our XD homepage. Yeah. I just like the whole idea of like doing uh, like an app and promoting it as if it's like some movie <laughs> with The Rock in it. And then we just have these like quotes from people. Is that a, That's I right. Know. I don't get out much, so. So here's what I wanna do, is I wanna create where it looks like it's a little bit cropped. And I wonder if I can do that. I think I can. I don't wanna like break it. So let's see if we can. What are you thinking? I'm thinking maybe ma you? mask it, but I don't want to mask the whole thing. There it goes. So let's actually open the layers up and see where we're you at. You kind of want it kind of peeking up from the bottom? Exactly. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's because we need these elements to be on top. Oh, you need little shortcuts? Nice. Boom. Yeah, so these are a uh, <laughs> little, little tip I learned in the CIA. <laughs> um, I'm just using a couple of shortcuts that um, I've learned from the rest of the Creative Cloud Suite. So if you want to move your layers up and down, you know, you can do command uh, bracket right, bracket left, and you can kind of shift them back and forth. And so what I'm doing here is I want this picture to be on the very bottom, which is part of this group, this mask group. And I want my, I want this rectangle, which is my horizontal rule to be on the top of that. So there we got it. Does it look right? It does. I think so, yeah. Looks good, yeah, that's that's fancy. And again, it's nice having that layers panel to reference just to make sure like, because sometimes things get, who knows, things yeah, get messed up. Totally. And there was a while, honestly, we didn't even have a layers panel <laughs> initially. And mm -hmm. there was a, a, a struggle. <coughs> it's actually contextual, by the way, because huh. if you click on another artboard, then you're going to have different layers for that artboard, which right, is nice. Right. And it looks like Daryl likes it. Cool. Uh, when will companies move from other software products to XD? This works so well. That's well. We appreciate you saying that. Uh, you know, and again, we're constantly improving it. We can look at uh, Adobe User Voice, XD User Voice. Um, I shouldn't say improving it. We keep adding features. It's not like something's broken. We just like there's so much to add to it. Um, just <laughs> I don't know. Just Ooh. that's actually a, a kind of incorrect there because. What do you mean? I think sometimes when you when you open up XD and you see the number of tools on the side, uh -huh. you think, okay, it's not that. Oh, where's the where's the remove point? Where's the rotate tool? Uh -huh. You know, where's the scale tool? You don't need any of those. Right. It's just like you select the item. Right. Everything's like contextual. So. Right. It's kind of uh, it's already kind of all built in. Yeah. Um, so some of that like knowledge will transfer over, especially if you're like a Photoshop user, like a, um, like mm -hmm. I am. Uh, so you know, if you can, you can hotkey and press V, um, or if you press uh, R, you'll get the rectangle. Um, I actually don't know what the hotkey for the. Oh, it's yeah, E. Me. There it is. Ellipse. Do you use? Uh, I mean, you seem pretty down with the shortcuts. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like I've used so many uh, different tools that I kind of just 
see if the ones that I know from other um, other applications will work. And you know, a lot of them, I imagine that the teams are sharing their knowledge, um, especially at Adobe, where they're like making V the the arrow move tool. Mm -hmm. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Ooh, I don't want to do that. All right, so we'll leave that in there. <laughs> what would happen? Oh, just to Adobe Live. It's like delivery for Melanie. She's our winner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's keep populating. This looks pretty good. Let's do it. Yeah. In fact, I don't know who's the, who's this person. E Katrina. She says, "Whoa, nice." Oh, that's my wife. She's talking about. I know it is. <laughs> but I think she kind of has a crush on you. There's a girl in chat. I think she's kind of into you. Oh, cool. I'm just saying. Cool. You better not tell my wife. Oh, it is. Oh, my wait, it's my wife. No. <laughs> uh. All right, so we're looking for green light now. Yeah, Daryl, you mentioned exactly what I was talking about, just like simple animation. I think there's very few like holdouts, and even in then, it's, you know, you know, you don't need it for everything, but we would, we would honestly like simple animation even for your uh, discovery screens, because mm. we want all that stuff to stay there. Totally. And just for certain elements to animate, so. Ooh, who's that uh, cute Asian guy? <laughs> yes, good question. <laughs> His name is Kevin Lee. He's up from 1 to 3 p.m. today. And so, yeah, you should check him, him out. Oh, I love him. Quality. Oh, I love Quality him. Quality man. He's a, he's a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh. No, just oh, am I You're Asian? a good man. <laughs> oh, so savage. <laughs> just messing with you. Oh, my God. Look at this. This is an app that I want. Are you, now let's talk about this. Somebody's asking, are you, were you born in the US or Taiwan? Let us know your background. Uh, so I am, <laughs> I'm Chinese, but I am what's known as an ABC, an American born Chinese. So uh, I grew up with Chinese values, but American culture. Down in the LA area. That's right. Basically. Born and raised, city of just angels. Just first time I talked to you on the phone, you were like, just like, Totally like chill and like everything I hoped you would be, you were that. <laughs> I was hoping that you would yeah, think that because like, like totally. Like he's a good guy. Like you know what I'm saying? I mean, sure you get that a lot. You're like easy to talk to, uh -huh. just like chill and uh, everything. Like you take things serious, but at the same time you're just like easy to work with, I'm sure. And not too serious. You know? I mean, unless it's fun. Yeah. I mean you don't Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are serious, but you yeah. Don't take it too serious. Unless we're having fun. In that case, I take fun very seriously. Yes. He not only <laughs> takes work serious, he takes fun serious. Oh. All right, so here's your favorite, Topsy Turvy. Look at this thing. This thing's wild. It looks like an alien. So this part is kind of like more of the production of the design, and this is like what we talked about a little bit yesterday. We had a question that was like, um, you know, is this normally what your process is like, where you uh, typically start drawing first before you jump into like any kind of um, program and start um, designing and building things? And the answer is yes. And the reason why is because you want to have that kind of roadmap for yourself, where you um, are able to kind of tell yourself where you're going. So um, if you want to check out my sketchbook again real quick, um, I'll just go ahead and show you that we've kind of laid everything out. And you can see the low fidelity stuff that we, we talked about on day one where here's our discovery page and like, you know, you can see kind of how janky it first started mm -hmm. and how I started to refine, refine the vision more and more. And then here was where we finally ended up. And so here, this is what we're working on right now is the genius detail page. And so we've got the like basic, um, the basic structure for it and like how we want, this is our game plan right here. And so on the next day, we're actually gonna um, develop the second detail page. And if we have time for it, we're a little bit of an about page. Yeah, and I think we're kind of not put, like people are kind of with a lot of good good ideas, things that you already had in mind, like of course how much you water it, how much sunlight, mm -hmm. isn't it poisonous to pets, right. um, just a lot of those, and it's fun to think about those, in, even in terms of like icons. Oh, totally. You know, whether it's a level, is it a is it a is it a sun icon? That's I don't know, so many things. Totally. It's fun to think about the visuals of a lot of those. Totally. Because you want it to still be like a quick read. Right. So. 
Shauna, Shauna Parmesan is here. Oh, oh my so God, you know her? She's yeah. my friend. Hi, Shauna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's streaming with us. She's yeah. an awesome uh, like illustrator, hand letterer. Oh, yeah. Works in Photoshop, and I just love Shauna Parmesan. I just love saying that. <laughs> Parmesan. Shauna Parmesan, that's what she's known at on in yep. on social media. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's but right. Instagram and stuff. So that's cool. You know her, too. I do. Well, you realize how small the world it is. It's true. Good to have you here. Hi, Shauna. <laughs> makes me show, she makes me smile. It's super cool. And I love what you're doing here, by the way. I, I just I just am in love with how you're executing this. Oh. Like seriously, you could have put it in a circle. Like you could have put it in a square. You could. There's a thousand things you could done. You could have done with this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is a trick that you kind of had in your back pocket, or I just love the baseline and how it's peeking out of that baseline. Mm. You got to do it. It's the small details that make a difference, you know. Yeah, it just and and just having that baseline alone is a is a good call. I think I think the designs need a stabilizing element, mm -hmm. and then they need some randomness to keep your to kind of keep your interest. Totally. You know, and each one of these is different, but it's a very quick read for all of these. This is cool. Absolutely, and it's important, like you know, just like in anything, you know, whether you're playing music or you're designing an app, um, it's important to know the rules so that you know when to apply them and when to break them. So yeah. to say that we're, used, we're using a baseline grid here versus not using one, um, you know, it's neither here or there. Like in this case it works, but if we wanted to create something really crazy and funky, like we don't have to, you know, adhere to this. So this is looking pretty dope, Yeah. if I do say so myself. It is, it is pretty. So let's just check out pretty, what the screen looks like. Pretty, pretty awesome. Oh let's my say, God. Let's say just, just, just leave it alone. <laughs> It's good. Ah, <laughs> oh, dad jokes. Oh my god. Um, so, next thing that's uh, that we have to do is kind of plug it into the rest of our prototype. So we're just gonna start with the high level elements, which is this back button here. And we know that when we jump into the prototype mode, because we're in Echo Various, I think what's gonna make the most sense is if it goes back to Echo Various. Mm -hmm. So in this case. From the Echeveria page, do we want it to slide from the right or from the bottom? I would think from the bottom. All right, let's try it out. Because, I mean, I think once this ultimately gets implemented, I think those images are going horizontally back and forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to dive deeper, as in you're going down. Right. But I could be crazy. Well, you know, the, the great thing about prototyping something is you just try it out and see how it feels. Yeah. It works. Hey, a lot of lot of love for Creative South out there. Is that how you know Shauna Parmesan? That's right. That's right. <laughs> we, are, we are all Creative South people. Uh, man, I must say, like, I need to go there. It's one of my favorite um, creative conferences. I don't know if um, y'all are from uh, the Midwest or the East Coast, but if you ever get a chance to go, it's a it's a one of my favorite conferences that happens in Columbus, Georgia, um, every year around April. Um, yeah, and I think that pretty much sums it up as well, by the way. That's right, the uh, the tagline for us is come as friends, leave as family. And that's yeah. real. No, I, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you, you see, you know, phrases on websites, that's like legit. Mm hmm Like. So I'm feeling pretty excited lots about of this. places will want to say that, but I don't think that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we, should we test drive this bad boy? Let's do it. All right. Here we are, what the suck. Drive. Going through the different genuses. And then we come across one that's like, oh, that's pretty dope. I want to learn about this. Oh, hold on. Do we want that to come? We want that to come up, right? So let's just tweet that live right here. Yeah, which I never do. I always close it and have to think I have to re-preview it. But think, you don't have to. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. So from here. All right, Alexander's going for a jog. We probably stop right now until he gets back. Oh, okay, cool. Bye. <laughs> we'll just wait for you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we just tweet that. Boom. James, have you been an MC for Creative South? I have. Sweet. I have. It is a fun job, and it is wow. it is not an easy job. So I admire anyone who can MC anything. Yeah, man. So there we've got it. We've got our genus details page looking pretty dope. So we've got a little mm. bit of free time, so going back, check that out. Does that feel weird to you? 
boom. Um, and we could just do a transition. It could just be a, a dissolve too. Oh, let's do that. That's pretty good. That's less distracting. I don't know. Yeah. But then we'd want it to dissolve back. You want to know a little trick there, by the way, since we keep changing it? Tell me. Um, uh, select that button, the button that goes back. Okay. Uh, click, just click, or pull that off, or click on it. Now, now do that drop down where it says target. Okay. And then go up to previous artboard. Anytime you do previous artboard, go ahead and select it. It will just do the whatever transition got you there. It will reverse it because really? that's probably what you want to. Oh, you're yeah. right. You're right. Hold on. Let's let's play this from here. Boom. <laughs> Look at that. And that's great, especially as you dive into pages or a, excuse me, an art board that you can get to from a number of locations. You just say, hey, go back to the previous location wherever you came from. So right, right, right. Go that's back to where you came from. <laughs> that sounded rude. I didn't mean it rude. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> RG3, Robzilla in the house. What's up, Rob? So this is looking really good. Uh, also mm -hmm. another awesome illustrator. So what I think I think what we're ready for is maybe we should start, because we have some time, let's start wireframing out the succulent details page. Yeah, so we'll <clears throat> we'll just kind of move on and we'll just Leaf this one and go to the next screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is... Ooh. Uh, Rob Zilla is speaking at the next Creative South next year. In, is he? I think it's in April, I guess. Wow. That's awesome. Cool. All Sweet. right. So. What's really cool is the succulent detail page is actually pretty similar. So we actually don't need to redesign a lot. Oh, look at, look at Jake, this looks when I pull it off. Yeah, and a lot of this is, let's take some of that. That goodness right there. So why don't you tell me I could do a repeat grid of, of uh, Text elements, I could, right? Uh, yeah, of anything. If you can select it, you can turn on a repeat grid. Okay. So, and yeah, whatever you want to do. It could be a repeat grid, you could break it up, you could, that's probably what I would do. So I'd make it a repeat grid, duplicate it a couple times, and maybe break it apart. You have those same elements that are pointing to those character styles. It's mm -hmm. like easy to change. Mm -hmm. So, okay. That'd be good. So we've got our content here. <clears throat> So I think what I want to do, so I've got two options here. We can go for the Pearl von Nuremberg, but actually I think what I do. That's a, let's just go ahead. This is fun. <laughs> like, I feel like that's just a made up thing. It's so funny. It's so real, dude. <laughs> it's this one right here, it's a purple one. Which is beautiful. Look at this thing. Who, who likes succulents? Show of hands. <laughs> Guys, oh. there we go. Every hand in this room has been raised out of this huge audience of people Everybody raise their hand. 100% participation rate. 100% participation. Because <laughs> this is gorgeous. Just crushing it all the statistics. And all I want to know is like, how can I keep this thing alive? True. And it's fascinating. I, I just, I'm just totally into it. Because okay. they change colors too. They do. They right? Do. Like based on sunlight and things? T totally. So Black Prince, for example, the more sun you give it, the darker it gets. And it, what does it get all? It gets all murdered out. Yeah. Hold on, let me see. I, I've already shown you the picture of it. This is what it looks like. So hold on, let me show you what it could look like. Look at this thing. Look at that. Black Prince. I know. That glowing, it's like almost glowing green from the inside. I know, just staring into your soul. Yeah. This is the succulent of the night, you know? Mm -hmm. But make sure you give it enough sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's also like seriously what I want to know. I want to do more research. Can I have a succulent like in my bathroom? And maybe it doesn't get, to, does it need direct sunlight? Mm. I, I, I don't know. I, that's why I need to go ahead and download this app once it's a thing. Totally. So. That's what we're working on right now, which is <clears throat> the succulent detail page. So let's just go ahead and like start populating a couple things. So we know that we're gonna be working with the black prints, right? Uh, 
a snake plant for the bathroom. Do you know snake plants? I do. I do. So those are, those ones actually require very little water. And actually, if you overwater them, they'll get soggy and like not do well. Oh, really? Yeah, and they're really good for bathrooms because um, oh, okay. They they kind of like that kind of humid environment where they get a, just a little bit of water. But if um, you've overwatered it, like I've managed to do, the, the leaves will actually get um, kind of soggy. Oh, really? Okay. Good. Good to know. They say you learn by doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I'm into it. So let's all uh, let's all let's all get succulents and report back next week for the live stream next week. Oh, perfect. Uh, speaking of live streams, next week we can actually kind of clue you in. If you are just joining us, uh, typically the topic will be different from week to week, and next week is going to be cool as well. Perfect. All right, illustration actually. Hmm. Got some, got a short list of names here. Looking at, probably have to keep those. We're gonna keep those close to the chest right now. But illustration week next week, which is cool. Nice. And then graphic design. Oh, okay, cool. And I'll have to do some research on uh, a couple of these people. Oh, we got it's like, uh, like color month uh, as well. So Anna Davis Court, who's. Uh, an Adobe Creative resident, mm. so we'll get to meet her and see her work. Uh, we also have Nathan Fouts and Bobby Chu, um, and I'm sure we're gonna have some other surprises. By the well, by the way, uh, it would be nice to have Kyle Webster in here. For I don't think we've had him in. At least, well, we've had him in before, but he's now an Adobe employee and <laughs> he's on the East Coast. And I wonder if he's been a Creative South. He seems like the type of guy that Friday he probably know. has. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Okay, this is what it needs. I got a great idea for part of this app. Hit me. So it's like, oh, you've studied up on these succulents. You think you're ready for one? <laughs> Test out your skills and see if you could keep this, uh, you know, virtual succulent alive. Yeah. So if you go, if you don't launch the launch the app, or at least go to that screen at least like once a week to give it fake water, oh. you're just not ready. Oh, dude, there's 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 gamification. An app for that. There's an app for that. There is, huh? Oh man, I'm into it. Yeah, my, and all of my seconds are like super dry. I want I want my I want my second one to be able to like text me when it needs water. I know, right? That would just be so much easier. And tell me that's not a thing that can actually happen. Because if you can detect, are there sensors you can put out a plant that will detect the water, water level I bet and then send? You know, it's 2018. I don't see why there wouldn't be. Right? It would be like one, <laughs> I don't know. That's got to be expensive. But anyway. All right, so here's a couple of the attributes that I know that we want to talk through. Um, definitely rarity is one of those things that is a, uh, kind of um, on the radar for people, like how common versus uncommon is this. So the way that I'm kind of grouping them is into, it's a little bit biased. I'm grouping into three categories. We have common succulents, which you can kind of go and get at any home garden center. Uh, we've got uncommon ones, which you still can get at um, a home garden center, but like very kind of specialized ones. Mm -hmm. And then we have straight up rare succulents, which you have to go to like a succulent and cactus show to get, or mm. from another like succulent nerd. And those run up from like twenty to like a hundred dollars per specimen. There's this really dope. Oh, I should share this with you. You want you want to see one? Yeah, more? I do. Like, if you're interested in it, I'm in, I'm into it. Check this out. <clears throat> this is one of my absolute favorite aloes. It is called Aloe Polyphylla, <clears throat> and also known on the street as the Spiral Aloe. Spiral Aloe. Look Looks at this thing. Pretty sweet. So when it starts really small, it's like super tiny, and aloes actually grow like really slowly. So this is what they look like. They don't even look like that. And a super mature one like this mm -hmm. takes like five to seven years to grow. Wow. So when you see somebody have, that has like a specimen like this, you're like, oh my god, this is seven years of work. Yeah, I would want to attach that little sensor on it that says, <laughs> hey, you know, water me. It's the sensor that texts you. I know. <laughs> I'm into it, so just, yeah. Oh, look how beautiful this thing looks. It looks like- It is gorgeous. It looks like something that somebody made in Illustrator, right? Yeah. But this is- Yeah, use the blend tool there. 
Yeah, this is a, this is a real organic <laughs> plant. And this is how it grows That's, in, in the wild. It's, it's like nature's blend tool. <laughs> <clears throat> a little bit. It's pretty pretty unbelievable. <clears throat> Stop. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, so what, one of the things... Anything to make this guy laugh, because he has one of the best laughs. It's <laughs> cool. It's almost evil genius laugh. A little bit. <laughs> a little. <laughs> um, so one of the things I know people were asking about is whether or not <clears throat> some succulents are edible or whether or not they're toxic. So um, I don't know that any succulents are edible unless you're an animal, like a, like a rabbit, because... Um, um, I don't think that you can eat any of them without getting sick to some degree, but um, there are certain genuses where they actually have like caustic sap, so they're really not okay to eat. Hmm. Um, so, and some of them are like not, most seconds are safe for your pets, so we should actually probably put that in there too. Yeah, that's good. So we'll, we'll do some research on this, um, and maybe, maybe um, Paul, you can yeah. look that up. On, gotcha. the, on, on the black prints, whether or not it's safe for pets. Okay, let's do it. And I, I, I'm, I feel pretty confident about this. So maybe you can verify whether or not it's actually toxic, but I'm pretty sure to say it's not. <laughs> then we'll just put this in here for now. Into it. Do some research. Uh, Yes, yeah, so yeah, Alistair, yeah, aloe vera is a succulent. It is. Which, it's, you know, I know anytime I got sick growing up, we had to drink aloe vera juice. It's like, I know what you're gonna say, mom, I'm not feeling well, I gotta drink aloe vera juice. <laughs> I get it, mom. <laughs> to this day, what do I have in my fridge? Aloe, aloe vera juice. juice. Nailed it. Climate, light, I can dive into some of the water features, soil, fertilizers, containers, all pretty good info, but. Uh, all right. So I'm doing one thing here that's a little bit different <clears throat> than we've done before, which is um, I'm kind of reversing my type hierarchy. And this is something that is not uncommon, but <clears throat> it's something that, like, because we uh, our values here are so short, like we've got our rarity, we've got our light needs, and you know, toxicity, um, and because of the the answers for them are so short, we're we're actually going to reverse it. So we're typically the title section would be the the kind of like uh, portion that would be like more um, higher in the hierarchy. We're actually going to highlight the value that is is calling out. All right. Um, so here is a perfect example of where to use your repeat grid. Look at that. Uh, <coughs> Euro, e euphobia? Euphorbia. Euphorbia. You want me to spell it for you? Uh, no, I got it right here. Cool. Uh, is basically, it can be, you know, poisonous. Not that it's going to kill you, but it can, like, irritate your skin or, you know. Yeah, definitely want to be, uh, what's the word? Competent around euphorbia. Don't let your... Don't let your animals eat them. No, um, just, just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. You know, fortunately for us, we're not worrying about that for now, but if we were to like build out the full rest of the app and wanted to cover more genuses, we would have another another screen here that would cover Euphorbia, and then, you know, jump into the different details pages, um, and then definitely want to have like a call out somewhere here that says this is a, this is a dangerous succulent, quote unquote. Yeah, this is fascinating kind of, um, yeah reading about it because like I guess cats and animals will uh, you know chew on grass or uh, anything for the chlorophyll because it helps with digestion mm -hmm. but if you don't have you know grass or anything like that uh, you know the, an indoor cat is going to eat this green plant over there right. and that's where it's kind of an, an issue right this 
This is so cool. So when you tweak the um, when you tweak the repeat grid margin, you can actually set it up to where everything lines up on the baseline grid. Check that out. I've already set it up. I love it. You just like nailed it, <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that how you feel? Yeah. <laughs> like nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> So in this case, we're talking about the um, the echeverias, and echeverias are safe. Right. Well, they are, right? Uh, I'm looking at the echeveria. So I'll actually put this one higher. I have the list, and it is not on this list. But we will find out, because this is important stuff. Uh, by the way, what we are doing here, just... Uh, so yeah, so Shauna is asking, this is a really good question, and again, Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, with XD, you can do, you can prototype, you can design and prototype the whole app, which mm -hmm. is essentially what we're doing right now. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't code it out for you though. Like we've done all those for for forays into machine generated code, and that's how you kind of end up getting developers to hate you. <laughs> like designers might love it, like oh here's my instant app, but that's how you make enemies if you hand it to a developer. Right. You know, you just don't. And again, we've we've tried that. Essentially, we're giving the developer all the graphics, assets, positions, sizes, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. to let them do their job. So, and the benefit of that is that you may not always want um, a turnkey solution because one of those things that you leave up to automation is like you risk something not working correctly. Where you do, and, and it kind of depends on whatever the product that it, it is you're designing, whether you're designing a, a native app or a, a mobile website or you know a website for a desktop. Um, those are going to use different tech stacks and different um, code bases, and depending on what you're working on and what your limitations are for your team, um, that's going to depend. And so there's like kind of too many different varieties to be able to account for every use case. Um, in which case is like this is like an mm -hmm. alignment tool where you're saying this is the vision. Now let's run towards this goal together. Yeah, no, that is good. And yeah, hopefully you work out as many kinks as possible and, you know, so there are no surprises, at least once it gets in the developer's hands, they're on the same page with whatever you're creating. Exactly. I do actually think there's a room for machine-generated code, by the way. Oh, I believe in. Because even if you think about, uh, you know, take website design, for instance. Yeah. We can talk about that all day long, but like, you know, Let's let's be honest. What are what are people using? They're using, you know, in browser apps, if you will, uh -huh. like the Wix, the Squarespaces of the the Muses of the world. Totally. And developers are like, we're good. You want to make that one-off website? You go for it. <laughs> you know, and and it, who knows? App development can get that way at some point. Like, hey, you know, you just want a simple informational app? Here it is. But you also have people that were saying, somebody in chat, I don't remember who it was, is like an Android developer, was like being opportunistic, which I love, mm -hmm. saying, hey, if you have an app, I'll program it for you. <laughs> I just wrote down your name. Oh, with the new Zeppelin integration, thank you so much. Uh, so Zeppelin, Zeppelin allowing you to get all those details for the developer uh, with that plugin, which is also now available on Windows in the July update. Alistair, you're doing my job, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing my job between you and your wife, she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So. So, one of the things that I didn't account for in my sketch, because <clears throat> I, I want to have this kind of Oh, it was Alistair, by the way. He's the Android developer. Oh, nice. Hashtag Android and dev. Nice. <laughs> So one of the things I didn't account for, which is um, I've already got this hero image where I, I kind of want to showcase what a black prince looks like. Um, this is not the right photo. We're going to replace it later. But I really want to have like a kind of module here where it's, it's almost like a carousel of uh, three different photos um, where people can click through and kind of see them. And so mm -hmm. the cool thing is I actually came across this really cool photo in stock and from this one photographer. I don't know if I, like, I downloaded it though. But in case we didn't, <clears throat> it's okay. We can just go um, grab it from Adobe Stock right now. Because I've gone ahead and saved it in my library. It might already. You can <clears throat> open up your library in 
uh, XD. Really? Yeah. Go to File and open CC Libraries. And then there's that drop down. I don't know if you put it. Yeah, so, and then actually now that that's open, we can now go to stock in the browser okay. and then locate one. And then we can just sync it directly to that folder. So you just Tim's on it. Thank you, Tim. Zeppelin Avocode, all these uh, various sort of extensions that are, you know, can be included as part of XD. So just right here. <clears throat> okay. Can you, like, this is, uh, so it's, it's in something called my library. Is that James, the same James that's on your desktop? Mm, for XD? Yeah, like, yeah, um, right up there. So um, if you go right uh, up there. It might not be. And I'm glad you're, like, running into this. This is, you know, we just got to make sure. Right. This is something that could happen to anybody, quite right. frankly, and something I've, if you have multiple logins. Right, so if you have a, uh, if you work for yourself or you, you work a day job, um, you might have a company, a creative, account, uh, creative Cloud account. And this is really normal where your team will be able to pay for your license um, and sponsor you. So in this case, what it, <clears throat> what's happening is I have my personal account right here. Um, you, and I'm logged yeah. in on my work account. And you could probably just download that to your desktop. You could do it that way or you can do switch your whole logins and stuff. But if you click on it, let's take a look. Sure. Oh yeah, jackpot. Look at all these gorgeous. There they are. This is gorgeous. I want you to be able to share that. Well, anyways, just uh, if you do select, see that download arrow? Yeah. Save to, do that, expand that out actually, or expand out my library there. Okay. Like click that, uh, save to computer, just download. Nice. Zilla's out, buddy. Don't leave us. Come back. All right, man. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> All right, cool, we got it. <clears throat> so James is asking about using a repeat grid. When you change the text, the text is like data that's gonna be uh, uh, specific. So it's not gonna change or propagate across all of them. Mm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You, you'd have to just redo that repeat grid with that new text. If you wanna see that t same text title for all 15, for mm. instance, you gotta, Right. Do it again, basically. Right, right. So check this out. This is an idea that I've got while browsing different um, different photos. Sweet. So you see we've got a black print specimen here. It looks beautiful, right? And <clears throat> what I'm thinking would be really cool is if we actually put it in here. So I'm, I'm probably gonna do it in like the not most efficient way but we'll see how it turns out. And so this is one where it's like you've got every single type of um, succulent. And what we actually want is just this row here. And so what I'm actually gonna create is this like kind of vertical carousel. Which reminds me, I'm gonna see how that animation The feature requests, checking that in uh, user voice. 4,000 votes. We're actively working on this, by the way. Just as you do that, just to kind of give you a second. Sure. Uh, kind of switching over. You can see I'm actually on this site, adobexd.uservoice.com. You can just get it to it from the help menu. Um, and it says feature in the backlog, but we are actively like working on this, just so you know. Um, and that's okay to say that. I think a great uh, live stream to tune into, to hear directly from the XD team is on Fridays. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's at noon is uh, when they go live and that's that's when you try to pry it, <laughs> info out of them. <laughs> you know, nice. like, please, please say something. So anyways, that's where that's at. Animate individual elements separately. Weeps. We may or may not have seen some of those things. So. Huh. 
It was fun talking to the uh, one of the product managers, oh, yeah? Jonathan Pimeno, yesterday. He was like, because we were like, hey, how do you kind of figure out what features to add and things like that? And mm. he was like, yeah, user. it sounded like user voice was like one of the main um, main areas. But it's between that, uh, obviously, um, doing a ton of like client and customer visits, mm -hmm. uh, listening to the community, and then just like obviously doing your own job as a as an intelligent person making those decisions. True. And how, you know, obviously how how complex some of those features will be. Oops. Work it, work it. And we have uh, less than 15 minutes right. for the challenge submission. So keep in mind that is happening right now. And you can check that out right over here. Just to recap. Uh, three plus screens for a smartwatch time travel app. So you'd be like, bloop, take me <laughs> to 1985. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why 85, but. Now we know which decade you want to live in. Yeah, oh man. Ah. Uh. Katrina wants to know what you're looking for because she might know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you're like, have you, seen my, have you seen my boots? Have you seen that one succulent image? It's, uh, yeah, I'm looking for a Black <laughs> Prince um, hero image. But I found one. And it looks pretty dope. Ah, uh, okay, cool. So we've got this set up and it looks pretty good. So let's rename this. And I just wanna see what it looks like. Is there, and then, is there more information you want me to get for the Black Prince? No, I think, we're, right. I think we're good. So whether or not it's toxic, I don't think it is. But maybe, I don't, yeah. So we're just going to put nah for right now. But you know, in, in the case of... N-A-H? Yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> I mean, maybe we should... I, what about a skull and crossbones? Like, it's not poisonous, so you should say yum. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just joking. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's perfect. Don't listen to me. So maybe but maybe we do want to... I can see still. a lot of these, like... Um, like these are details I can read about it, but like, is there a, another way to like iconify these? Oh, definitely. So maybe we can do that if uh, we have a little bit more time. So like partial or full sun, like obviously a sun icon half filled. Oh, totally. Or something like that. Totally. Or half covered with clouds. Yeah, we can totally just add something here. Same thing for the rarity. Um, I can. Same for the water. Help you. Oh, that that would be great. And then toxicity. But you know, one thing that we might want to do is give them a little bit more peace of mind instead of just nah. We'll add a little bit of flavor. I like it. I like that you're just showing a little personality there. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, you're good. <laughs> so this is looking really good. And even, you know, again, getting a writer involved, what if everything's from the plant's perspective? <laughs> like, don't eat me! Exclamation point. That would be funny. Or... So check this out. This is just a, a, an idea that I had, but it might work out well. Um, so I've created this module here, which actually has a giant image in it. And so it's got this like, uh, <clears throat> it's almost like one of those turnarounds for a character animation that you would see. But uh, instead of a turnaround, we're just gonna do like a rotate. So I'm doing, I'm kind of like hacking it together a little bit. Mm -hmm. So in this next one, what I'm gonna do is, oh, okay. I'm gonna rotate it. Ooh, up. I like, this is gonna be cool. So oh, I, I love it. I wonder if this is going to work and, yeah, how, and how it's going to look. Yeah. It's going to be good. Uh, I, I hope. hope. I hope. So Brian is just joining us. Wants to know what we're designing. Yeah, you want to do a quick recap? Yeah. I mean, I can I just kind of mention it while you work or whatever. <coughs> I don't want to, like, <coughs> distract you. Because this is going to be really cool. I love what you're doing here. Uh, okay, why don't you tell, fill them in then? Yeah, so basically we're creating a succulent app. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> so helpful. <laughs> No, it's called What the Suck. We started out by sketching this out. We, uh, James, Sue, the man with the design skills and the notebook where he did his sketches <laughs> and started working in XD, kind of working out a lot of these issues. We started yesterday. We're halfway through. Uh, we have multiple screens that we'll review as well. Um, and we're now down to the details of this murdered out Black Prince succulent. Oh, yeah. We're learning so much. So much. So relevant too. <laughs> so we can actually just jump straight back to here. 
right. So here's an important detail. So like because we're doing three um, different variants, because this is a prototype, um, <clears throat> so whenever somebody clicks on through this, you want to make sure that the buttons and the functionality are still going to work in your prototype. Um, so what I like to do is kind of do a once over and make sure I kind of like do a little bit of quality assurance and making sure that everything is going to work, at least even for the first off, <clears throat> so we can test drive it. So <clears throat> let's see what this thing looks like. I'm really excited to open this up, actually. <laughs> so, so here we are. You got it, Brian. Here we are, Brian. <clears throat> Here's our succulent discovery app. It's called What the Suck. That's all about discovering different genuses and kind of building out the mental model of what the world of succulents are. So everyone knows about aloes, but not everyone knows about agaves, about aeoniums, um, about echeverias or haworthias. And so this is just kind of like a starting point where we're getting people, we're getting their feet wet. And then what we're doing now is building out the different genus details pages. So you know, if we jump, if we're diving into echeverias, what are they all about? Um, I call them the the flowers of the succulent world, <clears throat> and kind of some common um, varieties that you might come across in your general like home garden store. So here we've got the different variety listings. Um, so one thing that we forgot to do, which is really cool that we can do it just on the fly, is plug in the Black Prince listing. to go down to the second detail page. So now that we've got that plugged in, let's see what it looks like. Boom. Oh, what do I want to do here? Paul, is there a way I can um, have this go? Oh, here we go. Don't preserve scroll position. What are you trying to do? I want to go from here to the Black Prince page. Here we go. And then let's see what this looks like. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's sweet. Oh my God, look how dope that looks. You guys like it? Yes. Awesome. Oh, this is really cool. So here's. So you did a preserve scroll position, right? Exactly. And this will work if you have one of those kind of turnaround shots that we were able to leverage from Adobe Stock. Thank you to the Adobe Stock team. Um, so there we've got it. So far, so good. I'm going backwards. Ooh, I broke that. Ah. Hi, Sarah Harris says it's sweet. Rachel's into it. She says awesome. <laughs> Alistair says dope. Dope man. So one thing that we're seeing that's a problem right now is that because we plugged in the logic for this button to just go back from previous, and this and this will happen as you're prototyping. You'll start to like discover little bugs in your prototype, um, which is why it's important to kind of do a, a pilot run of it. Uh, you'll wanna <laughs> you'll wanna be able to select your thing, um, and you kind of wanna like hard co code it and tell it where where you want it to go back to. So in this case, we know that we want it to go back to this like a various slide. So that was one of those things where you got kind of like pick up an issue and you kind of just figure it out. Which is the whole, like, you know, the whole purpose of, like, prototyping. Like, you kind of expect to run into some of these situations and get them worked out. Totally. <clears throat> it's all about breaking it so that it doesn't break later. Right? I oh, like look at it. this. Oh. Uh, yeah, maybe increase the transition time a tiny bit oh, yeah. on the rotate. That'd yeah. be good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's try that, actually. I want to see good. The, yeah, I Especially see for, like, the live stream for everybody. It's, and what we can do is this gets further along. Maybe today, probably for sure by tomorrow, we'll, we'll share the link with everyone. Mm, definitely. So keep it just a time check. Five minutes to get your challenge entry in. So if you're getting inspired, go ahead and use that as motivation to knock out a design. <laughs> Let's see what that looks like. Two seconds might be a little bit too long, but we do want this thing to be kind of smooth. <laughs> what, do you what do you think about that? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> maybe, we'll very, maybe we'll tighten it very up. Very cool. Nicholas says two. All right. Oh. 
Uh, you can do you can do easing as well. So <clears throat> mm -hmm. these are what I call like little fine details. So the bait. Uh, you kind of want to start with broad strokes when you're designing anything, um, especially when it comes to product design. And that's kind of the reason why we started out first with wireframing before we jumped into visual design because it just gets too easy to get stuck in the weeds. <clears throat> so when you start tweaking things like animation durations um, and different kind of like easing, uh, easing curves, um, this is what I consider like the cherry on the top. So these are the little details that make or break like the small interactions. Um, and this is the kind of thing that I would worry about much later than like right at the beginning of your product or w at the beginning of your design. So these are things that like are not going to break your design, but will definitely make it a lot nicer as you're able to polish them. Yeah, I agree. That easing, I mean, yeah, this, this kind of takes it to the next level. Uh, my wife is uh, telling me to do 1.5 seconds. Do you two work? pretty well together you like she's an illustrator and you know I think she has a good visual eye and oh yeah she's a good person to bounce things off of totally yeah she, she, my wife is capable of having because she has a different she's also a creative like like Paul mentioned she her background is in animation and illustration um, she has a different perspective on things so we'll regularly go watch movies and she'll mm -hmm. catch different motifs and things where like I it totally just like flew over my head Really? Yeah. Oh wow. So we'll we'll That's both cool. we'll both be watching the same movie, but we'll both be seeing different things. Yeah. That's fascinating. All right. So let's see what this looks like. This is really nice. And I think it's good to just have a trusted person, you know, that you can bounce things off of. <laughs> totally. And what, hopefully you meet somebody in chat, like get to know us, of course, as well. Hit me up on, you know, Twitter and Instagram. They can only hopefully hit you up. Is that cool to like? Yep, please. You know, yeah, if you you're hey Jamesy. Uh, no, so if you want to reach me, or uh, what's the easiest way? So I'll just go ahead and spell it out for you guys. Um, if I you guys want to website. Oh, can I? Right here. Oh yeah. yeah, go go for it. Come on, load. It's currently 83 degrees in San Francisco. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> All right. Boom. How are you doing? Just fine. <laughs> <laughs> doing just fine. <clears throat> Into it. So again, this is, uh, we'll go just hellojameshsu.com. Yep. yep. And again, this is where you can show off your great work. Look at how these break the border. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, yeah those are awesome. look really good. looks really good. Loving this font too, man. It's Playfair. Playfair. <sighs> Love it. So um, if you guys want to find me on the internet, my handle is at mm. OHJames and the letter Y. O Jamesy. Okay. <laughs> That's O Jamesy. Love it. So, anyways, get a hold of him. Uh, again, number of outlets. There's us. There's even like, even if you drop in it, like, so Behance now has works in progress. Mm -hmm. So, if you actually design something, you need to post it. It's similar to Instagram stories and all that stuff. Perfect. And you can get, you know, other people's opinions, what they think, all that good stuff. So, cool. I'm going to switch back to your screen. Okay, sure. More pretty stuff. And yeah, in about two minutes we'll review these designs. Sounds great. So we're starting to see that everything is working really well. Um, and you want to make sure you go backwards and forwards as well to be able to make sure that things aren't weird. Uh, you see like that kind of brought it back to uh, that scroll position. So from mm. here, when this goes backwards, we want to make sure that that is not, um, that scroll position is not preserved. So we'll just go ahead and double check that. We'll uncheck it. Oops. Oh, that is cool. Did you know about this feature? What's that? When you click here, there's a little icon mm -hmm. for pin. And I think that that's the preserve scroll, scroll position feature. And then if I uncheck it, let's double check that that did that correctly. Oh, no, it didn't. I wonder what that was about. Um, th that, was, that was a pin, too. It was. It wasn't a lock icon. Oh, you know what? That was the... Um, that was the float, or keep a uh, fixed position. Yeah. That's okay. what that was. And so yeah, fi fixed position icon. Select that, did it turn on? Did it? it yeah, it did, so I turned it off. Okay. Whoops, don't want to nice. do that. All right. Thank you so much, Adobe Live, for posting all your fancy links. So much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Just posting it right there, perfect. Boom. So there we've got it. Lovely. <clears throat> oh, what do we want to do?
do next? We've got these built out really well, so maybe what we want, might want to do is just go ahead and build out the next, um, or at least start start the next one for day three. Yeah, that's good. I think this is a good. I mean, you've done a lot of work. I mean, I think it's I think it's looking pretty tight. Um, <laughs> I think what we could do is like, um, you know, there might be different ways to maybe approach this some of this information. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, what else? What else is there? Well, we could go into the nitty gritty and like if we wanted to add iconography, like some of our viewers were I saying. I think that would be kind of fun. We could definitely do that. We kind of kind of prep some of that. It'd be fun to, if we shared a Creative Cloud library, we could have those linked and they can like, sure. you know, be updated by, you know, I don't know, like an illustrator, like by your wife. That'd be awesome. <laughs> She's just hanging out, huh? A little yeah. credit some icons. No. <laughs> But we'll get it. We'll get it squared away. We'll do a lot more prototyping, and we'll also be previewing on a phone too. That's what we could do tomorrow. Perfect. And we haven't even gotten into design specs and all that too. Oh right. So, uh, yeah. How complex do you make these? That's the question here for for your prototypes, um, for executives and also clients. So for it depends on the audience. So Dale Carnegie, the author of the book um, How to Influence People and Win Friends talks a, a lot about this concept about how he really loves fishing. And so this book was written in the 1930s, so he's a really interesting guy. Yeah. The other thing that he really likes, which is really popular at the time, is berries and cream. But, I don't know if I know this story. Check this out. When he goes fishing, he does not put berries and cream on the line. He puts worms on the line because he baits the hook to suit the fish. Bait the hook to suit the fish. That's right. Did you hear that, Gus? As a as a fisherman, I know all about it. <laughs> he's like he, he knows all about okay. that. Maybe we'll have to have a live stream around <laughs> Gus's fishing stories. <laughs> so to answer the question of how complex I make the prototypes, um, it depends on who the person is and what their tech savviness is. Uh, if it's somebody who has who is a very busy schedule, I try to keep it just to the high level talking points and to basically just the meat and potatoes and show them uh, the things that they need to hear in a language that they can understand. So, you know, if this page was really busy and it was causing a lot of, um, causing a lot of people to leave, I would say the page is very busy and it's making people leave and it's affecting our revenue. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what I just... The bottom line. Exactly. People. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. Well, uh, again, this is, uh, I guess, uh, you are, are the clients for all of these designs we're going to review right now. Um, and uh, you're kind of like the man. Oh, right. Let's, you know, let's dive into this just so you know what we're talking about. We're going to dive into the challenge because that clock says zero, zero, zero. Uh, we're going to be creating a three plus screen experience for a smartwatch time travel app. Boop, boop, boop. Take me to 1985. How is it going to work? <laughs> Perfect. Maybe I will. I might see something that's a total blank screen and everything's audio driven, you mm -hmm. know, which is totally legit. So, uh, in no particular order, other than first <coughs> submitted, Colby. Hopefully, you're in the house. Good to see you, Colby. His time travel smartwatch app is right here. Uh, in fact, let's go full screen. Let's get into this. Current time. Is it really 10, 8? Well, okay, that's good. Let's get started. Where are we going to want to go? Forward. Whoa. Into the future to 2020. Yeah. Let's travel to, you know, two years into the future. Uh -huh. Check battery status. Make sure your smartwatch has enough battery charge to get back. That's fun. Slow clap. <laughs> How are you going to get back? Love it. That's right. That's thinking ahead. Loading. Lovely. I feel like we should play one of the animations of the rocket ship here. <laughs> this works. Uh, very cool. Yeah, going back in time. Let's travel. Boom. This is an overlay, which is a, a new feature. Boom, mm -hmm. boom. Well played, my friend. It's great, great job. Colby Kleitz. Uh, hopefully I'm saying your last name correct. Um, I do not know who did this next one, but let's dive into it. Rhodes. <laughs> roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. And using the icon set, sorry I forgot to mention that. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Oh, when, boom. Hmm. That's just like, that's where we wanna go, year ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And come back. Love it. Go back. 
done. Fly by. I like it. Smartwatch. <clears throat> Time travel app. Whoa. It's actually, so I, I'm kind of clicking out, clicking on these hot spots. Uh, let's click on this next icon. It says, okay, this is the present time. Let's go back. Destination time, so 1955. Let's go to 1955. Time travel in progress. <laughs> That's cool. Fun. That's well, fun. Yeah, a little loading bar. Lots of uh, back to the future. Uh, last time departed. Hmm. Cool. That's your last, your, I guess your history is what I'm assuming. Mm. And of course, the, I guess the current time. Cool. Just holler if this is your app. I want to give you credit for um, what you're creating. I like how there's a flight number. Check in. So we're reserving, we reserved a flight and a car, maybe for the future. Sure, why not? I like how we have a seat number. Come on, gate 2A. Yeah, sure, why not? How else is Jet Airways going to survive in the future if you could just time travel just by clicking your watch like the other examples? Exactly. Ah, uh, by Munir, is that who I saw? Uh, no, Mun Munts Munster. Oh, here we go, have some images. Travels. Hmm. So I'm just making sure I can't scroll. A little gamification. Travels, excitement, shuffle, world clock. Last session. Hmm. So some of these are, you know, some of them, some of these aren't exactly like uh, time travel related. Hmm. But this does say travels. Hmm. So yeah, cool. Thank you for submitting. Time travel, love the colors already. Lovely. You know, this is like in your face. Like, yeah. you know what, everything's gonna be like neon green in the future is kind of what this is. Totally. I don't know, saying. <laughs> Ooh, scrolling. So Whoa. here we go, menu. Whoa. Uh, with or without Tyrex, register, comprehensive insurance, number of passengers, TARDIS availability, <laughs> destination. Oh, this is fun. I'm just going to click in this background. So, like, with her. Ah! ah <laughs> T-Rex! That's so funny. <laughs> that was cute. Let's go down to destination. Roll or enter your choice. Whoa. That's interesting. Well, like, maybe rolling back in time. I see. Something like that. So cool. And, uh, yeah, cool. Great job. Love time travel. Love it. Smartwatch time travel app. Let us know if this is yours. Uh, this icon. Let's go ahead and check in. Sure. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's call our. <laughs> this could be an overlay, you know, so you can click on it, click off it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then let's just go back like that. Cool. So that's more like a more of a literal time travel plane. Mm -hmm. And sorry about that. Jonas Becker. Let's go to destination time. Whoa. Beep, boop, 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 beep. That is fun. Set the destination time. I like the thought of just somebody like time traveling like one minute in the past just before they Look spilled their coffee. This is so much fun. Look at this. This is a cool graphic. Yeah. <laughs> you are now in 2077. Hope you have a nice day. By the way, days are now norm are now two years long. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Travel back. Whoa. July. Starting in five, four, three, two, you're now in the future. That's lovely. Yeah, that's kind of fun. So, and you might have a clear winner as we go through these. Sure. We can talk through them. Sure. I want to hear your, first of all, great opening screen. <clears throat> Whoa. Search, recent financial travel. Ooh, quick fix, marriage recovery, 
Things just got deep. Real deep. <laughs> they got deep in here. Uh, let's go to recents. Okay, there's a reach, recent traveling, travels, financial travel. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> quick uh, fix, I see. Quick fix. Oh yeah, so again, I just wanna go back 10 minutes or one minute, because I just spilled some coffee. I kinda mm -hmm. like that idea. Mm -hmm. I wanna just go back 30 seconds, so I can just like grab that coffee cup like as it's falling, because it just <laughs> make me look sort of cool. <laughs> Marriage recovery. No guarantees. <laughs> now I'm depressed. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, good work. Multiple aspects to that one. All right. And if we didn't review yours, might have just, just missed the deadline. Not to worry, we will review those as part of the next segment. So, what do you think, my friends? Take me what's around the block. Yeah, buddy. Let's kind of turn this all. Uh, so this one, again, I can go back on that screen. Six screens, the goal was, again, a minimum of three. Uh -huh. I think most of these, you know, this one has 14 screens. There's a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of, yeah, a lot of screens there. Okay, let's make sure this one has three screens. Sure. Time travel. That was fun, let me just click on this. <laughs> and then this one, five screens. The shuffle. Huh. Whoa, wait, did, okay, we, did, yeah. we, did we see this we one? We didn't see this one, no. I mean, I might have missed a hot spot. Because some of these you can scroll, so scrolling down. I see. I just like it's just like just roll the dice. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I don't know how I feel oh, about that. Man, talk about an adventure. Yeah. Uh. Uh, checking in, checking in, like renting a car. Mm -hmm. What terminal? The big thing that's is missing is the year. Right. Since it's a time travel app, I got a little confused. Right. So, it seems more like just a travel app. <laughs> Still good. Okay, so go back to this one. Remember this one just kind of had the yep. fun shuffling through this. Go, boop, boop, go, car, somewhere. Mm -hmm. There we are. Uh, fly by, when, what time, where, come back. Go back to the very front, the first screen. Mm. Yeah. Sending your specs to your ride now. So that's when the jet <laughs> or spaceship comes to pick you up. Ooh, so, you, so we didn't see this one either. Um, <laughs> wow. Well, soon it'll be there. I like that. That's very clever because it's like, hey, why are you getting all bad out of shape after over waiting? You know, <laughs> freaking, we own time. Right. That's awesome. Nice. Done. Nice. Boom. And then Colby's. <laughs> All right, uh, take me back to the Jonas Becker one. And then he's like, check battery status, so I think that was really clever for this one. Oh. And uh, which one? The one that's by Jonas Becker, I think it was. Oh, here we go. I think I gotta give it to Jonas. Congratulations, Jonas Becker is our winner, and the, uh, yes, is now the proud owner of, what, another year of Creative Cloud, if you already have uh, Creative Cloud, um, but you are a big winner. Jonas Becker, hopefully you're with us. Congratulations, buddy. I like how you just dove in and made a decision. You're like, this one. Well, I, I like it. What I love about this one is that it is uh, kind of, is really well thought through, um, and it kind of really made me believe that this could be a, a real mm -hmm. app. That, and, you know, there's some good thinking here that made me think like, okay, um, I could see this actually being a thing. And th there's a lot of confirmation mm -hmm. in here. Um, yeah. I, I really like the use of like the feedback for when you're actually traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Travel. Yeah, dismiss it. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. I think it's well thought out. It's not. It's not trying to be like overly clever or complex or anything like that. It totally mm -hmm. works. 
So great job, and honestly, great job for everybody uh, who submitted an entry. Uh, did uh, a great job. I really like this. This is a fun one too, by the way. This time travel one. So, yes. Congrats, Jonas. Let's just go. There we have our. Yes, perfect. Sorry about that. So <laughs> yes, so plenty of cool entries. Not to worry if we didn't review yours. We'll review them for the next segment. Uh, we have Alex Manega coming in in a moment. He's over there. He's doing yoga. He's in Dalwin Word Dog right now. We are not supposed to disturb him. <laughs> he's doing these stretches. And Sarah Stewart as well just left because she doesn't want me to razz her. But she's <laughs> here as well. And it's a full day, by the way, of course. We have Kevin Lee with Jessica Moon. And that's all this week on Adobe Live. Just kind of quickly review that schedule. So thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We have you tomorrow as well. This is the same schedule for tomorrow, but James has been with us for two hours, done a great job, Alex Benega, as well as Sarah Stewart, awesome designer, Kevin Lee as well with Jessica Moon. It's cool. Each, each host is a cool designer in their own right, so it's cool to see. Uh, oh, thank you, Valtar. Really appreciate it. We still have about 10 minutes. This is great. Okay. To have more time is like, this is... Just crazy. This is awesome. Um, yeah. Should we keep going then? Or are we just like. Sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, there's a thousand different ways we can go. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about like the icons here. So I want to, like, what if you <laughs> married these two ideas of time travel? Like, here's what your plant will look like if you don't water it. It's like, here it is going downhill. Ooh. Or here it is, here's what it looks like if it gets overwatered, which should be a great resource. Because I want to know that. Like, do am I overwatering, underwatering? Like, what are the signs for those type of things? Mm. You know? Mm. And, you know, maybe if we, and just kind of, you know, brainstorming even with this app, if you, if it does say, you know, um, if some of these items here were clickable mm. to where if you have partial to full sun or... Uh, whatever those are, you know, tell me what is it, how do I know that it's getting enough sun versus getting too little? What mm. is that? Is there more detail there? Is what I'm oh, I see and that, that even could be like <clears throat> an overlay. Like, do you click and then you get a little pop up that says, Ooh. Can we just like implement? Because you haven't, this is fun for me because I don't think you've implemented an overlay yet. Yeah, we literally, Ooh, can we just like, we literally do? just thought of this. Yeah. So yeah, let's super see. super easy, and we could do this because uh, again, ten minutes, plenty of time to just do something quick. Just crank it out. Just make make it happen. All right, so we're just gonna create a quick icon in that case to make this happen. Um, we're not gonna worry too much about the colors or any yeah. or really how it looks. Uh, we are just gonna give ourselves something to click on. Perfect. Cool. Grouped. Did you do a little shortcut? Yeah, just kind of command, command G. All right. So uh, make a make a new artboard, and you can draw one out or anything. The artboard tool is like right over there. Doesn't really matter. Oh, I've I've just gone ahead and press A, and you, it'll give you all the things right here. Oh, okay. Perfect. So there it is. This is going to be our overlay. Position off to the side. Mm -hmm. You could just draw a box there with some text or whatever. Okay. So let's create something really simple. And we will just create this box. So typically, mm -hmm. what I like to do is make sure that I have the content first, but because we're kind of just making this on the fly to see if it'll work. Uh, well, I got a great idea. Hit me with it. Uh, full box uh, background blur. Oh. So we'll like blur out all the content that's there. Yeah. And then we'll we'll have like Does you know, that another. Work? I think we're gonna find out together, my friend. Okay. It, wait, how do I adjust the uh, the darkness? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So what do we say? Partial to full sun. So let's just bring that over. And we're gonna adjust the lightness of it. Yeah. And then whatever. Random text, we can pretend like that's something. More details, like. Too can... little. Perfect. Yeah. There's a way to close it, too, right? Oh. Yeah, don't worry about that. 
Okay. Oh, that's a good that's a good point. We'll we'll both uh, kind of yeah. Let's just uh, link it up, and I, I think that we'll we'll check the background blur. Okay, sounds good. So go to prototype, Boom. and do a click and drag to that, and now that see that next at the top where it says transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, select overlay. Mm -hmm. um, it turns it just transparent, so it just gives you that visual indicator. In fact, it gives you this visual indicator on the left side saying, hey, this is where it's going to go, which is perfect. It's mm. going to cover the screen, should be fine. Sure. And then that's it. So let's just, all we need to do is test it. All right, let's test it. So we created this button. We're going to click it and see what it looks like. Boom. Oh, my God. Look at that. There you are. <sighs> oh, and it goes back. Oh, my God. That is so cool. Does it go back when you click on it? It does. Yeah, perfect. So we should come up with some. And you know what would be fun for this one is if you adjust the contrast, so instead of everything getting darker, it gets brighter since you're dealing with the sun. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting out of hand. <laughs> but the fact that we did that in like a manner of moments. Yeah. You know, we're well on our way. Yeah, totally. So hopefully that's a fun idea for you as you dive into the challenge today. And... Uh, yeah, really for your portfolio at the end of the day. Because, like, sure, we want you to win Creative Cloud, but we're really trying to build people's portfolios so they can get a job if that's what they're after, or, mm -hmm. you know, and really just have fun. Totally. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. -y. I really love this. So maybe what we can do is also build it out for, uh, mm. or at least we'll just start it for tomorrow. We'll build it out for uh, Rarity. We might want to do it here for. Watering is so much fun. I think just like visually dealing with this stuff is just fun. So we're getting crazy now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Now we're good. We don't. This is what if. Oh, there's so many things we can do. Because what if you access the camera and you're like. And maybe you don't really need to do this, but I like the idea of like, here's a camera view if. If your plants this matches this color, then it's overwatered. <laughs> I don't know. That might be too complex. It might, it might not be no longer a beginner's yeah. guide to succulent discovery. I know. We're getting out of hand here. But it's check that it's out. That looks, this is starting to like. Uh, this is a really good feature idea. Yeah, there's one thing I know how to do is like kill plants, so I think I'm an invaluable resource for you. So proud of you for that. <laughs> <laughs> my years of, <laughs> you know, even my fake plants have died. How did that happen? <laughs> or were they already dead to begin I'm with? I'm like, hey, I, just, I should just leave them alone, as they say. <laughs> Bad jokes. But yeah, man, it's looking good. Thank you, thank you. I'd say it's it's getting close to close to party time. Oh yeah. T Y M E. <laughs> no. So many puns. Oh, there we go. So this is perfect. Brian's like, hey, yeah, my wife can. She'll she'll take an after a ringer. Like if if you can get somebody who normally kills plants to, you know have a second one, like survive and know uh, the fundamentals of it, mm -hmm. well on your way. Uh, so Sean, I'll have to take a second look at that. Uh, you're trying to download the iOS UI kit. Yes, it is a DMG and it's not, I don't know why your DMG is not opening. I'd have to take a second look at that, but I think it actually is a DMG for the iOS UI kit which is fascinating. Good thing that it is small. I'd check the file size to what it says on the web page versus what's downloaded. That's why, how you know the whole thing's downloaded. All right. There's a drop shadow, but you went through the trouble of creating a rectangle. So the reason he did that, if I, Frank, Frank's asking. Sure. The reason you created that line is you just wanted a thin line that was uh, that was uh, had a gradient and blended into the white on both sides. That's why you did that line there. Yes. Yeah, so you can't do that with a drop shadow. So this was for that horizontal one. Uh, I don't know if he's talking about the other um, button, but like in he the, might be. So in that case, if, if it's for this one, 
Um, there's many different ways you can approach something, and that's kind of like the beauty of having a tool like XD is you can you can do it the way that I did it here, which is like just straight up using a shape to create this flat shadow, or you can definitely just like use the uh, inbuilt the built-in uh, drop shadow feature to to recreate that as well. Um, it's all about what you're comfortable with, and at the end of the day, like if if it communicates the thing that you needed to do, then then you know you should be good. I'd say you're pretty good. You're a good guy. Did you have fun today? So we're wrapping up. We're gonna sh we're gonna shut her down. We'll let us celebrate. Cool. And uh, yeah, it's party time for us. And who we have up next is we see you over there, Alice Benega, and Sarah Stewart is up next. Full day. Hang out with us. Chances to win random giveaways. All this fun stuff. Thank you so much, James. Bye, everyone. Thanks, buddy.